Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering nimble storage, the power of predictive analytics. Now your host, Jeff Frick and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in downtown San Francisco, 1 Kearney Street at the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch Event. Got a whole bunch of people here ready to hear kind of how Nimble is applying predictive analytics, actually big data, uh, to really help flash storage and storage in general do better. So, I'm joined in this next segment by Stu Miniman from Wikibon, and uh, from Nimble, Rod Bag, the VP of Analytics and Support. Welcome, Rod. Thank you, good to be back. So, good event here. Yeah, it's been great so far. Yeah, great time. So, right, so Rod, you know, I think one of the interesting discussions in the storage industry has been talking about how to do more than just store data, but how to leverage data, how to get more out of data, yep. how to you know serve your applications, and that whole intersection with you know the analytics, you know, is is, is right in your sweet spot. Something that uh, I, I think Nimble's been doing since well before we were talking right. about it in general. I've yeah. seen some new companies co come out where you know analytics are kind of built into their environment, but you've quietly been doing that for a few years. We talked with you about it at the uh, you know predictive. Uh, it, it, it was uh, the uh, uh, when, back when it was just a hybrid array. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so bring us up to speed, you know, sure. what, what's been happening with InfoSight, you've expanded the software portfolio in the space. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, when we talked last, you know, two years ago or so, you know, we had the uh, the adaptive flash array. Yeah. Since then, though, InfoSight has evolved. We're, we're not only collecting sensors from the array, which we've been doing literally since day one, where we have thousands of sensors embedded in the Nimble OS software, and we've been collecting all of that information. Uh, we now have extended that up at the stack. So now we're also collecting information from the virtual environments. So it, it's, it's really interesting in that what we're seeing is when you talk about the app data gap, which we've, we've talked about in our launch here, and that's you know when they, you, you see that little spinny thing on your web page or whatever, and you're just not getting data as fast as you want it, um, we're, we're looking at uh, issues in the environment that are more than half of the time related to something other than storage. So it was really clear that it was necessary to really collect data up the stack so you could really pinpoint where the issues are because they're not just always on storage. In fact, less than half the time they are. All right, so say the virtualization layer, can you give us you know, what, what can you see? Is yep. it just VMware? Is it, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you get uh, visibility yeah, into? Yeah, so right now it's, it's VMware. Yeah. So we uh, collect essentially the same type of stats, time series data, uh, configuration information that we get on the array, but we're getting that from vCenter APIs. So we're collecting those same statistical pieces of data, shipping that home like we do with the array statistics on a very frequent basis, putting all of that same data now into the big analytics database that we have, so we can really do the analysis across the entire stack. Yeah, and w one of the things I find interesting about what you guys do is it's not just the customer's environment, but it's all of your customer's environment. Right. Y you have you know, some, some data, you know, how much data you guys have, you know, how yeah. many customers? I, I think it's, I, I know it's, uh, you know, what's it, 7,500 customers I think you have That's overall right. now, yeah. but how many do you actually get to collect data from, and yeah. you know, what, what do we learn from the collective that I wouldn't learn from the individual? That's right, so, yeah, so we have 7,500 uh, customers out there. We're collecting data from about 94% okay. of the uh, install base, so it's a huge percentage. What that has done for us is literally built one of the biggest data warehouses of this sort of data uh, that we believe is, is uh, at all uh, available. So we have about uh, 350 terabytes of uh, data in that database. And so what that you know, allows us uh, to do is to, when we're looking across the install base, we can really segregate patterns that we see from applications so we can understand across our install base, how is Exchange really behaving? What are the I.O. patterns look like, the I.O. sizes, you know, even what kind of snapshot schedules are reasonable for that kind of an environment. And we can make those recommendations to other customers, their peer groups. Uh, we can do things like sizing. So because we have that, uh, we obviously understand the configuration of the array, we understand all those I.O. patterns based on each of those kind of applications. Even in a greenfield environment before you buy an array, you can tell us that we want exchange with n number of mailboxes, we want to maintain or retain that data for so long. We can actually do very accurate sizing recommendations so that you're buying an array that's going to meet those needs and actually grow with you over time. Yeah, that, that, that's great. One, one of the you know, biggest complaints I hear from most storage customers is, when I make that first buy, yep. 
I'm only utilizing a small amount. And the way I forecast it is it's a dark art, right? That's it's, right. Sometimes yeah. it's just the budget I'm given. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. I'm taking some wild guess as That's to what right. they have. Yeah. But you know, plenty of customers I talk to that three years after they've installed it, they're like, I'm only using a quarter of it. Yeah. Right. I'm either yeah, yeah. way underestimating or way overestimating it. Yeah. So you know, how much money? You know, I, I would think that. It actually, your, your sales guys like this because the initial sale might be a little smaller, um, and you know they, they're not buying yeah. you know lots of unused stuff. So is, isn't that tough for the sales team? You know, it's you know that may be the case that it, you know, but but what we want is a happy customer that's buying the right thing, and when they see that what they bought is meeting their needs and it's not overextended or it's not you know undersized and so on, you know that that's great loyalty that we build with our customers. And the fact is is that when they send us that InfoSight data, we can project exactly when they're going to need more cash, uh, more CPU, or more capacity. So, and because the system scales, uh, on, you know, non-disruptively in all of those dimensions, you know, it's the it's perfect to get them s situated correctly at the beginning and advise them on how to grow that environment as, as they add more and more applications. Rod, I'm curious, how much do you find is stuff that, that, that you guys can fix, that you guys can tune because of the way they've got a certain configuration yeah. or the way they're running certain processes versus, uh, you know, I, wanna, I don't want to say noisy neighbor, but noisy yeah. neighbor issues that are, you know, things that are outside of your system control, right. but you see a recurring pattern and you know there's a chance to, to fix that, to, you know, to make it right. better. Right. And how does that work within the ecosystem? How does that work within the, uh, you know, we want one throat to choke yeah, kind so of we, a mentality yeah. I mean, of the it, customer? It's, it's kind of funny, I mean, we, even before we had VM Vision, is what we call that data that we're collecting up the stack through the VM environment, uh, even before we, we had that in place, we were noted as the company to go to for support. If you had a nimble storage array, but you suspected the issue may or may not be storage, it might be in the virtual environment, they still called us just because we built up that expertise. Um, so now that we actually have that data, we can really extend what we're able to do. So the noisy neighbor problem is, is something that we actually can expose to our customers, and they can see that within InfoSight. They don't need to call us for that anymore. So now they can literally have a nice pane of, single pane of glass across their entire estate and they can actually, we have a tree map, we call it, so of all their data stores, and they actually can see which ones are doing the most work and which ones have the highest latency. When they drill down on that, they can see all the noisy neighbors around that and what might be actually impacting that data store more than other uh, you know, neighbors on that same data store. So they can drill down and do all of that themselves nowadays. All right, so Rod, what changes now that you have an all flash configuration uh, to both the support and to InfoSight uh, for, for the Nimble customers? Yeah, so you know, you know, what's you know, obviously we have the new, the new product with the all flash array. There's a lot of new um, elements to how we make recommendations now because we're not just recommending a, a, a different model of a hybrid, but you may want to extend into an all flash array. We can even make recommendations that say this particular volume may be more suited to put on an all flash array, and because we understand that it's a latency sensitive application like Oracle, for example, so we can actually make those recommendations and make that very visible to our customers as well, now that we have the, uh, the AFA. I wonder if you have any good stories of, of, of flash moving beyond just low latency, super high value applications, where, where people are kind of rethinking what they can do because of the performance aspects of flash yep. in areas that heretofore you wouldn't have thought necessarily would qualify as kind of flash ready or flash valuable. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I understand exactly, but maybe. Yeah, because originally when flash came out, it was so expensive, yeah. right? And you I could see. only use okay. it for high latency, yeah, you know, yeah. where latency and yeah. trading applications is so important that right. you know we really had. But 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 now we're seeing people are using it in other ways. You know, they're they're going after applications in a different space kind of yeah. bringing that capability yeah. to, to the fore instead of just being a little bit faster. Yeah, I mean certainly, you know, VDI is a big one that's very suited, well suited <clears throat> for, uh, for AFA because of the, the deduplication factors. So that's one element or one application that we really see moving to, to AFA. But you know, still we see a lot of the database uh, applications that are very well suited. And even today we have quality of service or uh, you know, within our adaptive flash where you, know, you can actually have a mode which is an all flash mode. And so that means that you can take a particular application and pin that into cache, even on the adaptive flash. So we actually do see a fair amount of that in our environment today where customers on particular applications that they have really want that low latency guarantee um, that they're going to get it with an all flash environment but have the hybrid array or the adaptive flash array. So they can now move those things into, um, you know, as a few, few months back with our latest release where they can actually pin those into cache. So yeah, I think you do see more and more of these applications where they just want to make sure they've got that, um, 
you know, sort of guaranteed consistency from what an all flash array would deliver, but on the hybrid. So that allows them to mix all sorts of applications within that adaptive flash environment, but still be able to deliver all flash performance yeah. on some of those applications. So I, I'm wondering, you mentioned dedupe. You know, when yeah. it comes to storage efficiency, are, are you giving customers uh, you know, kind of, you know, what their peers are seeing, what they're seeing on an application basis, uh, so that when they're getting ready to, you know, put together an environment that they'll understand, you know, well, here's roughly what I should expect, and if I'm getting it, that's great, maybe I'm getting better, or if I'm not getting as good, maybe there's something I should look into. Yeah, so we, we do do that. I mean, from the performance perspective, again, we do sizing, um, uh, predictions and, and uh, either pre-sales or even post-sales, we can even tell them that they have enough headroom to add more and more applications you know, on that array. Uh, so yeah, it's fairly comprehensive in what we can tell them, uh, what will fit, you know, what they might want to migrate off to another uh, array or grow their existing array by scaling it and so on. Okay, so you, you've expanded with uh, the uh, uh, VM vision to, to yep. the virtualization layer. Uh, you've got the smart stack solution. Are, are, you, are you touching some of the other pieces yet? Um, you know, what, what can we expect to see going forward as, yeah. you know, that, that So that, one thing that that's very interesting on the smart stack front in UCS is that uh, when we, we did an analysis using InfoSight data and so on, on all of the cases that we, that we typically see from a UCS environment or smart stack, <clears throat> excuse me, about 80% of the cases that we see there are, are all things that could have been avoided with proper setup. So after the fact, you know, you're seeing these issues uh, crop up over time. And literally 80% are things that we could have just avoided altogether. So we are, we are providing a, um, a tool where it would help set up um, that environment. It's a fairly complex thing to do from the you know, UCS perspective. So just to get it right, we're providing some setup tools that really will eliminate most all of those cases. Once it's set up, it's almost set it and forget it. The problem is just getting it set right the first time. So that, that's how we're addressing that in the near term. Yeah, I, I, I was speaking to one of the customers of, of Nimble that's here and uh, you know, saying, so how, how is the support? And he's like, well, the best thing I could say is, you know, it's great support because I almost never need it. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, do you have any stats on just your customers as to you know, what percentage of them you know, don't need you know, any support or how much you cover without having to have any, uh, you know, the customer's intervention? Yeah, so about nine out of 10 cases yeah. are issues that, that we expect a customer is going to have, we actually detect first. And we provide prescriptive analytics back to them that will tell them what they need to do to avoid that issue or to correct it if it's something that has happened in more of a proactive nature. So about nine out of 10 cases are, are things that we open automatically for them. The, the other thing that, that really is kind of this offshoot of InfoSight that you may not really sort of connect the dots yourself, and that is that because we have all of this data and the, the tools to really automate a lot of things, but not only that, but when we have to do a manual case, how do you get it solved fast enough? And that's, you know, with these tools and the data that we already have at our disposal. At our disposal. So what that allows us to do is really eliminate level one, level two support people and have just level three. So now you have these very smart people that can solve problems really fast, and that's one of the things we, as I mentioned earlier, customers are now coming to the, us knowing full well it's not a storage problem. But because we have that expertise, we're allowed to solve, or we're able to solve problems up the stack very effectively and quickly. Well, clearly, 94% of them giving you access to their data yeah. to tap in for you know the greater good of everyone really shows uh, a trust and a real yeah, you know partnership exactly. with your customers. Yep. Well, Rod, uh, congratulations! Uh, right. Thanks for having yeah. us up. Great event. Okay, well, appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate Absolutely. It. So, Rod Bag, I'm Jeff Frick. He's Stu Miniman. We're at the Nimble Storage Predictive Flash Launch. You're watching the Cube. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.